how are we i hope you're well Consul Kija here um this is inspire yg now if it's the first time you're popping in here welcome and thank you for everybody who pops in um or checks up or uh just you know comes on this page and gets inspired or sends me a dm and tells me something i've shared has provoked a thought or give them an idea or answer the question just anything i appreciate it <laughs> so this is inspire yg like i said it's inspire yg on instagram inspire yg also on facebook so please check um check out those pages and if you um you'd like to have a close interaction or just um, um more more closer one-on-one -on -one kind of connection pop uh pop in one of those two uh platforms so another week uh like i said uh inspire yg is a page that sort of started a couple of years ago with an aim to sort of share my journey as an international student i moved to australia sydney to be precise from kenya and i came here as an international student so i am no longer a student but you know we don't we don't stop learning don't we <laughs> and so you know I, I i had a very interesting journey um as a student went through you know the ups and downs but most importantly had so many opportunities um come my way and i took advantage of them so on this page i share some of those opportunities and i also share um sort of that journey of transitioning from kenya to australia but also all the opportunities with scholarships and sponsorships and um, volunteering journey and jobs how i got jobs how i got internships some of the things that I've done to still remain in Australia and practice here. So all those are some of the things I share on this, some of the things I share on this page. Now, so today I have an interesting um, topic lined up. So I have five points that I'm going to share on self-doubt. So today I'm talking about self-doubt, which is something that I think a lot of us sort of struggle with. And I think it's very normal. I think... Um, I don't know of anyone who would say they've never had self-doubt honestly <laughs> i think even the most confident person that you probably know they have struggled in um somewhere along the line with self-doubt now i thought about talking of my experiences with self-doubt and one thing i want to do is just like a little a uh, little sidebar one thing i want to do moving forward is probably and i think i mentioned this hopefully hopefully get some of my friends to come on this page or this platform and share with us their experiences if, if i i've got really i met really some wonderful people in this country and um who've gone through that same journey of an international student and they pursued their dreams relentlessly they persevered they they went through those ups and downs and right now they've got something they're holding in their hands and i feel like they're not from my discipline my background is social work um uh social work and uh, i also have a background in business and minor in psychology so that's pretty much my my background but i know that people who are into engineering some people are into it nursing and so i want to bring some of my friends who are in different disciplines from myself or even same discipline to just share their experiences and so i will call that journey series i'll call it will be a series and um don't know how long it will be but i'll try and get my friends as much as as many as i can <laughs> to come here and share their journey because i think it, they inspire me and i'm sure they will inspire you as well so today back to the topic of today self-doubt so i was writing some notes and i was trying to reflect and i thought look i had a bit of a brainstorm with um my special person and we were talking about it and it was more of uh what is self-doubt and what I, I wrote here was limiting yourself when you are capable and i also thought about you know putting it this way you are literally putting limitations on your capabilities and i thought 
would you have self-doubt if you didn't compare yourself like i was asking myself like the moments the, the times i have caught myself really doubting whether i'm capable of something is it really that i was thinking about myself or was i thinking that i'm not capable but so and so is capable or I would have been capable if I had this and this, if I had this diploma, if I had this certificate, if I had this degree, if I went to this school. So I think it's almost like it's, it's almost impossible, what I have felt, it's almost impossible for me to have self-doubt if I'm not thinking uh, of it, you know, with comparing it with something else or with somebody else. And so when I, I also understand that it doesn't always have to be the case, but most of the time just imagine if, 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 if men were an island <laughs> I know we say no man is an island but if you're not competing yourself with anybody why else would you feel like something that you already know you can do that you can do or you can do better so anyway so I started thinking some of the things to five points that I thought about was what is actually the root cause of it what is the root cause of self-doubt and I thought first and foremost is the thoughts um and i thought about it's the thought of i can't do it it's it's you telling yourself i can't do it i don't think i don't think i have what it takes i don't think i have enough experience i don't think i've studied i don't think i've gone to school um so you're sort of telling yourself you cannot and the other thing would also be it's pretty much someone else telling you that you know someone has mentioned to you in the past that i don't think you can do it or i don't think you're qualified enough or i don't think so someone else has actually put that seed of self-doubt in you so the first one is where you literally plant the seed yourself and the other one is when someone else plant the seed of doubt in you and so but because you're the one left with the seed when it grows within you it, it becomes this thing where you feel like it's just self-made but it could have actually have developed from an external source outside of you the second point was um you forget you had overcome something similar uh and then that sort of limits you from pushing harder um or or even limits you from seeing the light at the end of the tunnel so most often than not when we are going through that self-doubt like not believing in ourselves, we forget that there is something else when I, I always feel like whenever i get into a position where i feel like i can do this it's almost like this a deja vu experience or feeling at the back of my mind it's almost like a nostalgic thing i feel like i have been here before but if i am if my judgment is, is, is sort of, you know, if I'm, if, if I'm in a dark space where I'm not thinking that I can do it, then I tend to forget that I've actually been in that position before with another circumstance or another situation that was probably even harder than what I'm thinking I can do now. And I overcame it. So it has something to do with selective memory. <laughs> You're sort of forgetting that you have overcome a greater challenge than this right now because if you can keep receipts and you believe that if i did that i can do this if you can keep that it's almost like having an evidence-based uh faith or evidence-based belief system where you know that i have an evidence that i've ever had a challenge before and i overcame it so i can overcome this um, so it's just sort of, I think, I think of refreshing our memory a little bit more <laughs> or writing down some of our successes or some of, or how we have overcome journaling. I think it's a good one where you write down some of the challenges you've had and how you overcame them. Then when you're in a situation where you're doubting yourself, go back to your journal and read it and see how you had overcome something then that, that same belief that you had to overcome that might help you in the current situation that you're sort of doubting um yourself about the third point was uh past uh crisis that you did not address or past failure that you never learned from so i i started thinking where else can self-doubt be manifesting or becoming 
coming from and this is a good one because think about a situation where you've ever gone or or a crisis you've ever gone through but you did not address it you pushed it under the carpet and you thought mm. for example maybe it's a situation in, in maybe you were in class and you lifted up your hand and you wanted to answer something the, the teacher had asked and maybe that teacher brushed you off or they sort of made fun of the answer or your response and so you sort of take that situation and if down the line you 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 grow up knowing that the answers or the responses you're going to give in any situation will not amount to anything so you end up being employed in a company where you are qualified you're put in a board of mem uh you're, you're probably even in a group where you are in a board in a boardroom and you're one of the members and they're expecting your input but you're just remembering that teacher who in in, in grade six <laughs> who told you that your answer was not good enough or made fun of your response and now you are afraid to actually offer what you're good at in this position years later so it's sort of like a crisis or a situation that you are dented um uh, or that instilled that self-doubt but you did not address it and move on and just say look I, or, or another or a lesson you know or a failure that you experience and to me failures are good because they are lessons but you failed at something and rather than learning from it you just told yourself i'm not good enough i don't think i can do this and so you instill or you plant that seed of doubt within yourself and it magnifies because what you focus on is what magnifies right so the fourth one i thought about where do self-doubt come from focusing on negativity like i was talking about i just mentioned that that where you put your focus on is what expands so if you focus on negativity that's what expands you focus on positivity that's what that that's what expands this point got me remembering as i was writing it down i remember just um a time and i think i shared this story before but i got um I won an award in 2017 and I was approached by this gentleman who was a leader of an African um, diaspora association in Norway and they wanted to highlight my story in one of their platforms in Norway. Uh, was it Norway or Sweden? No, Sweden. I'm sorry, Sweden. And um, so I was a bit apprehensive because I was like, oh, I'm not sure <laughs> whether my face and my story I wanted to go to the world. But then I thought, okay, we are here. Let me just, yeah, allow him or share my story. So he called me and we had a bit of chat or he contacted me and we had a bit of a conversation and I, and he ended up sharing my story in one of their platforms. And so one of the places they shared was on their Facebook page. And I remember going a couple of days later to the page and there was, there was obviously a lot of people, some of them are my friends on Facebook as well, but also like people that I've known for many years, they were commenting. But then there was this, and then there were so many strangers as well. Some of them were in, 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 in Europe and around the world. And this one gentleman, I still remember his comment <laughs> because he said, so uh, what has, what has, what has her achievement got to do with helping the rest of the world? And I remember thinking, I don't know why, but that comment, it stuck in my head. And then I, it's almost like it was trying to make me forget all the other nice comments that people had made, all, all the other encouragement and, you know, inspiration that people had told me they had gotten from my story. But I was just focused on this one comment. And, and I realized that, that that's a story that I made me realize that what you focus on is what expands. And so now I'm more, and it's good because it's okay to get, not everybody will be inspired by your journey. Not everything you say will inspire someone, but someone somewhere will probably benefit from something you might share. So one person not seeing value in your value does not devalue your value, <laughs> if, that makes sense, if that makes sense. Okay, so the fifth and the last one I thought was what brings about self-doubt is self-disqualification, uh, what I call self-sabotage, really. And, um, you know, it's, it's interesting because if you can, 
I, I always go by this phrase, if you can believe in yourself, how can others believe in you? It's almost impossible. So this reminds me of, I'll give a bit of a story of how I got um, one of the jobs that I've had in Australia. I finished uni in 2018 and for like a lot of international students, it's not easy to get a job when you finish uni, especially if you're trying to get into New South Wales Health if you're in New South Wales, because you basically have to be a citizen or a permanent resident, which is most case in majority of countries. A lot of government jobs are given to the locals. And so I struggled to get a job. I really wanted to practice as a social worker. And for some reason, I couldn't get jobs. So I kept applying and I kept being discouraged. I kept being discouraged. And one day I spoke to oh, one of my mentors and she, she told me, Connie, have you thought about if you could look somewhere else? Like, let's assume, don't look for social work job, look for something else. What are you good at? What do you think you can add value with? What else do you have on your hands apart from the social work degree? And up until that moment, I had not thought about that because my mind was fixated on I need to get a job because I've just graduated. I have worked hard. I've studied. I've done my part. I need to get this job. But then, most majority of the people, majority of uh, of the people around the world, do not always get the jobs they want, especially when you're a fresh fresh graduate. You don't always get the job you want up front. Most of the time, you have to go up the ladder to the job that you want. And so when she said that, I started thinking, mm, hold on, what else have I done apart from this degree? And straight up, I remembered a job that I had been, uh, I, I was doing part-time in, in my previous uh, place of work. And this these people had internally sourced me, so I had not applied for it. Someone had just seen that on my break. I used to love to go and help this department because I used to find that job fun. <laughs> It wasn't what I was employed to do, but I just used to do it for fun because I used to enjoy it. So someone had noticed that and this lady was trying to hire. And so they thought they hire internally before they do an, an external advertisement. And someone mentioned my name that, oh, she looks like she could do this job because she's always here volunteering or helping out. She looks like she enjoys it. So the lady called me and asked me, so I, I talked to a couple of people and your name keeps popping up that you seem to love this department, you seem to like what we do, would you like to, to join our team? And just like that, I got the job. <laughs> so I was having two jobs in one organization. At the time, I didn't quite know the significance of it, but now I understand because what, ha what happened is when I finished uni, after that struggle of trying to find a job, then one day I woke up and applied for that particular job. I applied to three different companies and I went to bed. The following day when I got up, I get this call and the person on the other side of the line told me, am I speaking to this one? So yes, and um, just got your resume. I wanted to ask you if when you are available for an interview. Um, and I also wanted to ask you when you can start the job. And I'm thinking, so I just, I'm still half, half asleep. <laughs> and they asked me, um, can you become this? It was a managerial position. And immediately I remember just saying, no, I wanted an assistant role. I do not want a manager. I disqualified myself. She was on the other side of the line saying, no, I think you can do the job. I'm looking at your resume and I think you can do the job. I am convinced I cannot. And I'm trying to tell her I cannot. I was still half asleep, but I still can remember feeling within my spirit, I'm disqualifying myself and I'm doing something that is going against who I believe I am, being self-confident and believing myself. Anyway, she said, okay, I'll, I'll check in tomorrow and um, I, was, I think she said something along the lines of, I'll give you a call tomorrow, something like that. Immediately after putting my phone down, another call came in. Now, to my surprise, I thought it was the same person calling me back. This was a different company uh, calling me for an interview for the same position, different company. And I pick up the phone and this one did not even give me options. They were just like, we want to invite you for an interview. Are you available tomorrow? And I was like, wow, <laughs> I don't think you even get to choose. But just like that, I ended up 
actually doing the interview i did three sets of interviews two on the phone and uh, no one on the phone one online video call and one face to face and i ended up getting the job but what i'm trying to say is what i learned was that you cannot sometimes we as human beings we disqualify ourselves and it's something that i've learned that we you cannot self-sabotage because sometimes we make other people not believe in ourselves in us when we could actually get either it's job opportunities promotions people looking for a business partner and things like that because we self or we disqualify ourselves and so yeah but also the other thing that reminded i that has reminded me um or came to my mind when i thought about self-doubt was the story in the bible of david you know how he someone went to anoint um one of jesse's sons and he's the, jesse is bringing up all the sons and doesn't bring david and he's a little one obviously out there <laughs> probably doesn't even look presentable he's a tiny one no experience nothing but someone just tells jesse no the one i've come to anoint is not here and it, it's the same story with with joseph you know joseph who had a dream and and his brothers were not happy about his dreams because he was seeing dreams about himself being you know uh, a leader of some sort and they are thinking so are you trying to say we are, you're you're going we are going to bow down to you but the story of david and joseph and you know many other people in the bible just reminds reminds me or reminds us that most often than not god qualifies the unqualified so most of the time when you have you know when you're being faced by self-doubt always remember that some of the things you qualified for you are actually born qualified you do need experience because obviously we we have to go through the, the the process of growing up from childhood to adulthood and get the experience and learn and all that but most of the time the the capacities that you have the inner fortitude um the grit the determination the qualification or that what qualifies you sometimes is within you you're born with it all you have to go through is a life process is to polish it but it's already in you so when you're when i find myself self-doubting or when i find myself not believing in myself i know that that's not coming from me and it's it's more like you know speak positive uh to yourself believe in yourself if you see a dream about it if you if you're feeling really conflicted or convicted to go through a certain path if you're feeling you want to be a chef and you have not seen a vision or a dream about being a teacher <laughs> that's an indication that probably that's that's the line um, you're meant to or that's the path you're meant to take to go towards your purpose in life that will give you fulfillment um, and obviously all the other things um, uh, that comes with that so thank you so much for popping in i thought i'd share this because this is what was in my spirit to share and uh i hope that this uh video inspires you and you know gives you that motivation and encouragement not to give up on yourself or give up on others or or others around you so thank you so much please don't forget to subscribe to my channel inspire yg um on youtube inspire yg on facebook and on instagram and until the next time god bless you and bye